On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Made for Heaven. But with that was a revelation that I was made for heaven. I'm not just some blob of random blob of molecules that one day is just going to fall apart and that's it. No, there's something within me that was made forever, for heaven. And when we're filled with the love of God, we see that, we experience that. So Jesus said in Luke 12, 49, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. Now this is one of my favorite scriptures. This is one of my life scriptures. Have you ever heard that you're supposed to have a life scripture? This is one of my life scriptures. A few years ago I was reading uh, Matthew Kelly and he said each one of us needs a personal mission statement or a, you know, whatever, a motto or a goal in life. And I thought about it long and hard and I came up with my goal in life. Some of you have heard it before. I've shared it many times. My goal in life is four words. Become fire, ignite lives. That's my goal in life. And this is the scripture that goes with it. Jesus said, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. And so again, it's my goal in life. I remind myself of this goal every day when I take my shower. When I take my shower, I remind myself of four goals. What's my goal in life? What's my goal this year? What's my goal this quarter? And what's my goal this month? I'm very goal-oriented. They say the happiest people are people who have goals and fulfill them. But anyways, uh, this is my goal, to become fire. I remind myself of this every day. And I try to order everything in my life towards this goal. Everything I do, all my energy, all the way I use my gifts, it's all, I try to order it all towards this one goal of becoming fire. Now, I want to share with you some dimensions of this fire, okay? This fire that the Lord came to bring to the earth. First of all, this fire, it's a fire of love. The fire that Jesus came to bring, first and foremost, it's a fire of love. And that's why we experience this fire where? Do we experience it in our feet? Do we experience it in our brains? No! We experience this fire in our hearts. You remember the disciples on the road to Emmaus? Jesus was speaking to them, and and they said, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us. This was the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God's love burning in their hearts. Why? Because it's, again, it's a fire of love. And the, the monks in the church, especially in the early church, they kept speaking about this warmth of the heart. And they said as Christians, especially monks, they're supposed to have this all the time. An actual physical kind of a, a warmth, a fire in the hearts. What is that? That's, that's the presence of God, His love burning in our hearts. We're all supposed to experience this, brothers and sisters. Jesus, in John chapter 4, verse 23, He said, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Other translations say, the Father and I, we will come and we will make our home in you. Can you imagine the Father, Jesus, coming and making his home in you? That's what the mystics call the indwelling trinity. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living, abiding, and yes, burning in us with his love. You see, Scripture says that our God is a consuming fire. And also that our God, that God is love. And so the Christian who opens his heart to God, to the Lord, has the indwelling trinity, love, fire in his heart, burning. This is the fire that Jesus wants to see burning in this earth, on this earth, the fire of his love. And and brothers and sisters, what happened on the day of Pentecost? You remember the day of Pentecost? 
Well, no, you, you weren't there. That was a long time ago. But you read about it. You heard about it. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Fire came down from heaven. Who was this fire? God. Our God is a consuming fire. God, the Holy Spirit, came down from heaven to dwell in our hearts and to burn. Brothers and sisters, love came down from heaven to dwell in our hearts and to burn there. That's the fire Jesus was longing for. I have come to set the earth on fire. Fire with the, with the fire of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Holy Spirit. And so we have Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Listen to this one. I hope you have this scripture underlined in your Bible. Paul says, The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. There is a summary of the gospel. The love of God on the day of Pentecost, fire came down from heaven, poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit living with, with us. And again, that's the fire Jesus wants to see on the earth. The fire of his love burning in our hearts. Okay, secondly, this fire is also a fire of peace. Okay? Well, you've heard my story. When I had my conversion as a teenager, I started praying to God at night. And for me, nighttime was a dark time before I knew the Lord. It was a, it was a time of doubts and, and, and temptations and bad memories and fears and all of that stuff. Because I didn't have the love of God burning in my heart. I didn't know my dignity as a child of God. I didn't know Jesus. So uh, I was in darkness. And, and bedtime, nighttime was a, a tough time. But I began to pray and read the Bible every night. And I remember one night laying in bed and feeling this, this burning deep within me in my heart. And, and asking myself, what is this? And, and along with this burning in my heart was the realization that all this negative, bad stuff was gone. No fear, no, you know, none of that stuff. Not only was it gone, it was nowhere to be seen. Not even on the ra radar. And instead, there was this, this love, this joy, but also this peace. This strange peace. You see, the presence of God, the love of God in our hearts, it's not necessarily, you know, something that makes us excited or something that makes us emotional or hyper or worked up. I mean, sometimes that happens. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, the presence of God is a, is, is a peaceful presence. It's a presence that calms us down. It's a presence that takes away all fear. The love of God takes away all fear. And so, uh, so again, this, this, this love of God, this fire is a fire of peace. And again, as a teenager, I experienced that. It's like I, there was this fire in my heart, this joy, but it was so peaceful. And you remember when Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he breathed on the Holy Spirit, he breathed the Holy Spirit on his disciples. And what did he say? He said, peace be with you, because our God is peace. And so again, in this fire, it's, it's a fire of love, but also a fire of peace. And like I said, the, the next thing, number three, it's a fire of joy. To, it, it's impossible to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to not have joy. Because the two are mutually inclusive. Where the Holy Spirit is, there is joy. And so again, the fire that the Lord wanted to pour out on His church, and He is pouring out on His church right now, it's a fire of joy. You know, you remember the story of St. Philip Neri, you know, praying, this ball of fire comes down from heaven into his heart, and he was joyful for the rest of his life. They call him the Apostle of Joy. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're filled with joy. Amen? We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to 
Father Mark Goring. The fourth aspect of this fire, it's a fire. Oh, one, one, one scripture just about this joy is a beautiful one. I don't want to miss it. John chapter 15, Jesus said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you. Imagine that. The joy of the Lord Jesus in us and that your joy may be complete. That's a fire of joy. Okay, um, it's a fire also of light. You see, in Jesus' time, they didn't have, you know, whatever, halogen lights or lead lights or light bulbs. Lights, it was a fire, a candle, a torch. And so when Jesus gives us fire, when he sends down fire, he's giving us light. He's giving us light, brothers and sisters. Scripture says, the light shines in the darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. And he shines in the darkness. And if we allow him into our hearts, we become the light of the world. Why? Because Jesus is shining in us. This fire, brothers and sisters, is not only a fire, but it's a great light. It makes us become beacons or um, uh, lighthouses. You know, the lighthouses at the marina so that the ships can see where they are. This light, brothers and sisters, it attracts people. People are drawn to the light. If we allow the love of Christ, the fire of Christ into our lives, people will be drawn to us because we have this light. Not everybody. Bad people don't like the light. Robbers don't like the light, you know. There are some people who prefer darkness uh, to the light because their deeds are corrupt. But again, you know, good people, they will see the light in us and they will be drawn Light attracts people. Light is also a, a, a thing of safety. You know, when you go camping in the woods up in Canada, you need a fire at night. You need light at night because it keeps the wild beasts away. You know, the bears and other things. And so, too, the devil doesn't like the light. When the devil sees the fire of God in our hearts, he runs away. Because he's, he's like the bears are afraid of the fire. They're afraid of the light. Again, uh, people... People who are on fire, we find security in them. I remember the founder of our community, Father Bob Bedard, he was a great light. And, and, and we found security in, in his very presence. He was a light. Light also, it reveals. You know, when you go, when you're close to someone who's in the light, who's a fire, who's a brilliant light, you see in their light, because it's the light of Christ, your own identity and dignity and authority, and destiny. You discover who you are. I remember as a teenager when I went through my conversion, you know, finally meeting, you know, Christians, Catholics, who were on fire. And it was like a light. It's like, wow, you can be a young person and be in love with God. You can be a young person and be virtuous. You can be a young person and renounce the world and still be joyful. These people were lights to me. They revealed to me who I could be, who I was. The Lord wants us to be lights, to be fires. A, a, a light is also a reference point. Again, like a beacon, like, a, like, a, like a, 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 a lighthouse. You know, again, I give the example of Father Bob Bedard. He was a beacon up in Canada. Catholics all over the country, they knew Father Bob. He knows what God's up to. He knows, he knows what God is doing in our time. He's a light. He's giving us hope. He's giving us assurance that God has not abandoned us. The Lord wants us to be these lights, to be these fires. And light, brothers and sisters, it's supposed to spread. You know, at the Easter vigil, we start with the vigil candle. That represents Jesus, the light of the world. And then we light our candles from that light, and we pass it on. And brothers and sisters, if we become lights, if we become fires, people will be drawn to us, they will catch fire, and then they will go off and set other people on fire until the whole world is on fire. That's what Jesus wants to see happen in this world. Jesus said something beautiful about John the Baptist. I would love, if one, I would love to hear Jesus say, this one day about me. Remember what Jesus said about John the Baptist? He said, he was a burning and a shining lamp. You can tell Jesus loved John the Baptist. And he said, John the Baptist was a burning and a shining lamp. 
Each one of us should long to, for, for Jesus to say that about us one day. To be able to say, you know that, that Father Mark, he was a burning and shining lamp. You know, that Charles, he was a burning and shining lamp. You know, that Jay, he was a burning and shining lamp. The Lord wants us all to be burning and shining lamps. Point number five. Fire is also power. It's thrust. It's, it's, it's energy. It, 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 fire impels us. It's, it's electric. Electricity is a form of fire. You know, when mechanics say uh, you need fire. What are they talking about? They're talking about spark plugs. You know, you need electricity to spark the, you know, the combustion or whatever. Uh, and so again... Uh, or you think of a rocket, you know, the fire, the, the fuel just burning and, and, and just, you know, launching the rocket into outer space. In sports, when you have, a, like, you know, in hockey, you know, you'll have a guy one night and he's just on, he's just energetic, he's just going, you know, crazy on the ice. And what do they say? They say, hey, he's on fire tonight. And so, too, when the Lord sets us on fire, it gives us an energy. St. Paul says... The love of Christ impels me. When we're filled with the fire of God, we want to do stuff. We want to, we, want to be, we want to become missionaries. We want to do great things. The love of Christ impels us. It's a fire. It, it sets us off in, in, in a dynamic explosion. The Lord wants us to, 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 to have this, this fire. Point number six, the fire of God is also a fire of purification. When God comes with his fire, it's also to purify us, to burn out all the bad stuff, to destroy everything that is not of God. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, the Lord says, the prophet says, he will sit refining and purifying silver. He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold or silver, that they may bring offerings to the Lord in righteousness. And there's so many scriptures that talk about, talks about God being a refining fire. And so when we, when, you know, when we live our lives of, 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 of prayer and union with God and being filled with the fire, we should be experiencing purification in us. Bad stuff is just being, it's being purified, it's, it's being driven away because of the fire, a purifying fire. Again, when I experienced my conversion as a teenager, that happened immediately. I was, you know, set on fire with love of God and all the bad stuff just, you know, started fleeing, you know. It's like, you know, it's like setting a fire underneath a, a bee's nest or something. All the bees, they just get out of there as fast as they can, you know, which would be an awful thing to do. But I just give that an example. Okay, finally, point number seven, the fire of God is a fire of life. You know, I mean, when a person, when a person dies, what happens? The body starts to cool down until it's just, there's no, there's no more warmth, there's no more fire, there's no more electricity running, running through, the, through the, uh, the body. Or same thing, have you ever been into a cabin in the middle of the winter where it's cold and it's, everything is frozen? Why? Because there's no fire in the stove. And so too, uh, the Lord, He wants there to be a fire in us that's a sign that we're alive spiritually. You might be alive physically, but you'll be like the, the prodigal son before he returned. He was dead, spiritually dead. You know, in Revelation, the Lord says, I know your works, you think you live, but you are dead. But when we have the fire of the Holy Spirit, it's, it's a sign of life. It is life, because God is life. And, 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 and so again, uh, this, this fire is a fire of life. Brothers and sisters, are you alive spiritually? If you have the fire, you're alive. People see that in you. People see that fire um, burning within you. Jesus, in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. He didn't mean going partying at the clubs every weekend. He meant a whole other category of life. Eternal life, abundant life, transcendent life. I remember as a teenager praying at night, experiencing this, this presence of God, this love of God, and immediately recognizing this is out of this world. All the experiences and whatever pleasures or whatever I had had in life, none of them came even remotely close to comparing with being filled with the love of God. 
And I remember being, what, being filled with the love of God, recognizing this is, this is transcendent. This is something no man can produce on his own. This is, this is heaven. But with that was a revelation that I was made for heaven. I'm not just some blob of random blob of molecules that one day is just going to fall apart and that's it. No, there's something within me that was made forever, for heaven. And when we're filled with the love of God, we see that, we experience that. It becomes real. In Daniel and in Philippians, we're told that we are meant to shine like the stars in the heaven for all of eternity. That's our identity. That's what we're made for. And it's meant to start now. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Doring on Made for Heaven, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Doring on Made for Heaven. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at We Sink Our Own Ships. Dude, what are you doing? You know, it's, well, I don't know, it's kind of funny. You'll see, bzzz, you look at the water coming in, you know? And again, it sounds ridiculous, but the truth is, you, you know, you meet people and they're doing things that are so obviously uh, destructive. I often like to go as often as I can. I like to go right to church to spend some time in prayer. I love praying before the Eucharist. And recently I, I went to the church and I was praying and I wanted that day just to give thanks to God, not to mention all my needs of the day, but I just wanted to really thank Him. And I thought, well, I want to thank Him for what's most important to me. And as I reflected on that, I began to think I'm most thankful for God. God is so caring and loves us so much. I thought of Psalm 8, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? And yet he does, he cares for us so greatly. And then I also began to thank God for those he has placed in my life, my husband, my four children, my late mom who had such a wonderful influence in my life, many family members and friends, and those who have, have really had a wonderful impact on me spiritually. And as I left the church, I realized I hadn't even thanked God for anything temporal. And I'm very thankful for the house I have, for the car I drive, for the food and the clothing I have. But as I reflected on that, I thought, you know, the most important focus in our life is the Lord. He should be number one. We should be seeking first His kingdom. You know, in the temporal things, the things of earth, we can lose those in an instant. Stock markets can change and we lose savings. We can get taxed more. We can have something damaged in an accident. Something can be stolen. I remember walking out of church one night. My car was stolen and I had no way to get home. You know, nothing is for certain. But with God, there is no variation or shifting shadow. With God, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Even those we love, I mean, they can pass before us or move away although we have that hope of seeing them again in heaven. But with God, He's always there. And it's important that He is the greatest treasure of our lives. It's important that we take time to make sure we spend time with Him each and every day, that He is that first and foremost, that treasure in our lives. I think of Matthew 6, 19. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want to offer to you today a book called Treasures in Heaven and to encourage you in your own walk with the Lord. In this, and this booklet is written by Father Mark Goring, it gives some very good essential prayers that a Catholic should pray every day, as well as a scripture verse to reflect on. And I know the busyness of life and how, how you know, just crazy life can get with kids and work and school and so forth. But you know, when we take that time to be with God, to spend time with Him, we notice things really start to change. We experience His presence. He becomes that great treasure in our lives. And this is just a 10 minute a day guide. It's something that you can commit to. If you'd like a copy of Treasure in Heaven, please write to us at Food for Life. Do you recall the expression, you have not because you've asked not? I don't know about you, uh, but for me, maybe I'm just a little too focused on what's going on in my own life, but sometimes I don't um, realize the needs of others until, until someone asks me for something. And frankly, I appreciate being asked so that I can give. And so today we ask you to pray about supporting us on a regular basis. You may have noticed if you've watched Food for Life, we don't have uh, corporate sponsors. Our sponsors are you, the viewers, those who are in a position to, uh, to support us. And like a household, um, we have uh, monthly expenses. And so we're finding for ourselves what's ideal is to invite people to join us uh, in support on a monthly basis. And now we have a number of ways to uh, make that convenient for you. You can, um, you can donate online uh, or through um, post-dated checks or through uh, an automatic deductions from, uh, from your account or from your, your credit card. So we're, we're asking you today to consider, prayerfully consider supporting us uh, on a monthly basis. So to, to benefit, uh, benefit those potentially who are not able to support us. So we'd invite you to consider that today. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1564 and today's topic, Father Mark Goringon, Made for Heaven. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. If every viewer gave a loony or a toonie each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at We Sink Our Own Ships. Dude! What are you doing? You know, it's, well, I don't know. It's kind of funny. You'll see, bzzz, you'll look at the water coming in, you know? And again, it sounds ridiculous, but the truth is, you, you know, you meet people and they're doing things that are so obviously uh, destructive. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.